This news update is brought to you by One Life, One Love, One Hope. The Barbados Government Information Service invites you to Love, Poetry, and Song, Saturday, February 15th at Elara Court at 6 p.m. Relax to the smooth lyrics of Adrian Green, DJ Simmons, Janine White, and Disa, and enjoy the voices of Biggie Irie, Tony Norville, Bobo, Simon Pipe, Betty Payne, Tabitha, Larix and Nicovia, the ladies of Honey Jam Barbados, and more. Adults bring a minimum donation of $15, children under 12, $5, and two non-perishable or personal care items for the HIV Food Bank. Love, Poetry, and Song, Saturday, February 15th at Elara Court. Love safely, this Valentine's and beyond. This is the 6 p.m. Barbados Today update for Wednesday, February the 12th, 2014. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Come clean on the true state of the economy. That's the call from economist Clyde Maskell to government following an IMF statement on Article 4 consultations. Maskell, who's also the opposition Barbados Labour Party spokesman on the economy, says revelations in the consultation report presented by the IMF today suggest that certain information is still being withheld from Barbadians. The government has agreed to cease central bank and that is the printing of money to ease the pressure of the bank's foreign reserves. It has to be explained that notwithstanding the borrowing of $300 million in December last year, the foreign reserves have declined by over $110 million so far for this year. And this has occurred during the height of the winter season when the country should be accumulating foreign reserves. Meantime, although the IMF says Barbados will still have to do more, the central bank is insisting that the recommendations are in line with the policies government is already implementing. It says it's strengthening revenue collection, cutting public sector wage bill, and implementing a strategy to further reduce the fiscal deficit, among other measures. The central bank adds that it's looking forward to the IMF helping with continued implementation. And staying with the IMF, Mission Chief Nicole Laframboise is telling authorities that timing is critical to implementing the country's fiscal consolidation program. So if fully implemented, these announced measures, uh, we project them to lower the fiscal deficit to just under 5% of GDP next fiscal year. That's 2014-15. From what we estimate could be the deficit this year ending March, about 9.6% of GDP. So that's almost a halving. This would, in the short term, reduce demand for foreign exchange and re reduce pressures in the in the market and also help to raise confidence. The IMF mission chief also suggests closer and stronger monitoring of the financial system. She says stress tests have shown that while the onshore financial sector could withstand considerable shock, it's still vulnerable. Meantime, the head of the agency with oversight of the country's non-banking financial sector is standing behind the work of the Financial Services Commission. Chief Executive Officer Warwick Ward says the sector can withstand the fallout from government's plan to send home 3,000 public servants. Even when the FSAP was here, financial sector assessment, they did some very extreme models and it showed that the, the, the system was extremely resilient simply because uh, the level of capital that's built in the system is very high. And so they have sufficient capital to buffer uh, this fallout. Uh, from the economy. Now, like everything else, there are cycles. So, you know, you don't anticipate that this is something that will continue uh, 15, 20 years from now. Uh, and so you, you, you would find that you have, once you have sufficient capital to withstand this, this weakness, that uh, you won't see a, a fallout uh, on, on a mass basis. Staying with the economy, the Senate is debating a resolution that will allow a 10% cut in ministers' pay, senior public servants, and political appointees. In her contribution, Senator Maxine McLean accused the media of exploiting public servants who have been dismissed by government. There's a running broadcast. Two persons have gone home from there and people put mics in front of people's faces in a most disgusting manner. Layoffs. Severance, loss of job, whatever the circumstances, is not an easy thing. And for people to make a circus out of that,
to me is insensitive, it is inappropriate, and it is downright disgusting. We'll have more news when we return. Hey, I'm Raj Paul. And I'm Miss Paul. Look out for our love story and the story of others. In Barbados today, Share the Love Promotion. Share the Love Promotion. It's going to be running from February 5th to February 14th. You can check it out on BarbadosToday.bb. And remember, love, love is how we evolve. To record a video, send a poem, photo, or a greeting, call 417-1000 or email us at love at barbadostoday.bb. Continuing with other news now, three Colombians will have to wait a little longer to find out how they'll be punished for breaking the law here. Byron Valencia Lopez, James Mendoza Arevalo, and David Mauricio Bortera Montez have their sentences delayed when they appeared before Magistrate Douglas Frederick today. Yesterday, they went before Magistrate Deborah Holder and pleaded guilty to charges, including going into houses with the intention of stealing and having visa cards and the driver's license intended for use for illegal purposes. But the case was adjourned for sentencing today. However, Magistrate Frederick explained that he had to read the charges to the Spanish-speaking men again, and he could not do so without an interpreter. Their attorney, Alan Carter, is hoping they'll be sentenced by Friday at the latest. A fourth Colombian, Santiago Vieda, will appear in the District D Court tomorrow in connection with an offense allegedly committed in that jurisdiction. Problems continue to plague housing design and construction in Barbados and the rest of the Caribbean. And Elizabeth Riley, the Deputy Executive Director of the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, says failure to address the problem is costing money. Applying more widespread knowledge about safe construction will significantly reduce the level of damage and destruction, loss of life and injury. The inclusion of hurricane straps, for example, during construction is cheaper than the replacement of an entire roof after 75 mile per hour winds. Riley made the comments last night during the opening ceremony of a course dealing with the construction of houses. That's the 6 p.m. update. Join us again at 7 in the morning. Until then, log on to www.barbadostoday.bb. Subscribe to our e-paper and like us on Facebook to get more news and sports. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. This news update is brought to you by... Hi, I'm Red Plastic Bike. Anyone who knows me knows I don't like cold. Sunshine rains in my country. I love it. Catch the sun power.